how to use test containers to test our ASP.NET APIs when they use RabbitMQ, that's exactly what we'll see today. We have here a simple API that, by the way, you can grab the code as a Patreon, as always. And on that API, what we are doing is when our client decides to call the API to create a to-do item in our to-do system, we will eventually publish an event to RabbitMQ. And now we want to write a test to make sure that when we in fact call the API to create a new to-do item, we can see the message being published. So how can we do that? For that, let's use test containers. That is an open source project that you can use in order to bring a container for the sake of testing that by the end it will kill the container and you can rerun your tests. It's an excellent way to test this type of dependencies. So let's see how to do it for a case like RabbitMQ. So our first step will be to create a testing project. For that, I will simply create a new project and I will use XUnit because it's my favorite testing framework. Use the one that, it, that you prefer. And I will start by creating a test for the scenario that it should publish um, an event when the to-do is created. The first thing that I know that I will need is the to-do item, right? So to-do, and if we look into this API, we can see that we can create the to-do with just the title. And now we need to call the API. So what I will do on that case is that I will call the API client, and then I will post as JSON async to my endpoint, that is, this API to do's and I will provide the to do. But to do that, I need the API client. And how can I do it? The best way is by using the web application factory that will in fact create a kind of like lightweight server running your API that will provide you the access to that for the sake of testing. So we'll go to our test project and we'll create a new class that I will name it API Factory. And that API will implement the Web Application Factory. That is something that you need a package for it. So let's install it. And I will install this package, Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC Testing. Now the Web Application Factory needs access to the API that it will be simulating. So the common practice would be coming here and saying, for example, the program or the startup from this project. Since I don't have the program here accessible, since I don't have the class here, I have an option. I can either implement here the class or create a partial class of that one. But my favorite approach to this type of scenario is by creating an interface that I will call I API assembly marker. The assembly marker is a simple interface that will be there for the sake of referencing that API. So now I can do that this one is using the I API assembly marker. And with this, if I go back to my test class and I introduce a, a class fixture, this way the API factory will be called only once for all the tests inside of this class. Now I have access to it on my constructor. I can have access to the API factory. And that means that now I can assign to the API client, the factory dot create client. So now I have my HTTP client. That means that our request, since it's an asynchronous request, we need to await. So we need to change this test to an async task and let's keep moving on. So if now I can create the post request, the next thing that I want to check is that the message was published. For that, I need to have uh, Rabbit running. And I don't want to have a complete instance of Rabbit allocated just for tests. And then I need to deal with things like multiple servers running tests, uh, multiple builds in parallel, they might impact each other because I have a shared resource. I don't want that. So what I will do is to install test containers and bring a new container up for the sake of testing with Rabbit. For that, we'll go to install a new package that will be this one, test containers RabbitMQ. Now that we have it, 
we can reference it and we can build a container or wrap it. But this, even this might cause a problem. I might start the container, then I start executing the tests and the container is still not ready for that. And test containers give you access to this. So you can say only when this port is available, we keep going. This definition will give us access to the definition of the container. We still need to start it. So for that, I want to have a moment where I start them and a moment when I stop them. How will I do that? Since the start and the stop are asynchronous, I will implement the iAsync lifetime. iAsync lifetime is a way to have a constructor and a dispose asynchronous using XUnit. So there I can go to my RabbitMQ and say start the sync the same way that I can dispose it in the dispose sync. So our test is already starting the container with Rabbit and disposing it. But my application is not using that instance of Rabbit. Why? The way that the application is defined is that I will use a connection string that comes from app settings. So if you go to the program, you can find there this definition that is saying, do I create the connection to Rabbit? So that means that I need to have a way to decompose this and inject it with the new connection string. So let's do that. On the API factory, we can override the configure web host, and then I can say builder configure test services, and then I will place the code to review my configuration of dependency injection. So that means that I will first remove the previous configuration of the RabbitMQ um, client that I have and inject a new one with that connection string. I will first create this simple extension method to simplify the process of finding the um, registration and removing it. So then I simplify my code and I can simply say services.remove and the name of the thing that I want to remove. Then I can go back to my program CS, grab this line of code, go to the API factory and say dot add singleton. And when I add the new RabbitMQ publisher, instead of getting the connection string from the configurations, I can simply say RabbitMQ container get connection string. So with this, when I run my tests, it will now start publishing data into the container that I started for the sake of testing. But if I run the tests, they will run, they will take a while because of bringing containers up, bringing containers down. But I will not be sure was a success because in fact, I don't know if in the message is being produced into Rabbit, I'm not asserting that. And I need to take that step as well. The thing that I will do is that I will bring a new class for the sake of testing. So inside of my test project, I will have a RabbitMQ consumer. That RabbitMQ consumer will have the common thing of getting the connection string. As the other one, I will have a method to bind to a given queue, but then I will have a try to consume method. That what we'll be doing is creating the receive event, subscribing to that event, and once I get that event, I will action the task completion source. And that means that I will be waiting for a given time. So I don't want to stay waiting for a message for too long. I will define a timeout. And either when I reach that timeout or I receive a message, I will return if I could consume the message or not. And this class will be the one that we'll use in order to assert if the message was there or not when we were expecting. So what I will do is on my API factory, I need to create that class. That means that I need to define a property for the RabbitMQ consumer. And what I will do is I will start awaiting for the container to start. And once it starts, I will assign the connection string RabbitMQ so I can create the instance. That means that I can go back to my test and define here my RabbitMQ consumer that will be instantiated from the factory RabbitMQ consumer. 
So when I'm inside of my test, now I know that I have a consumer looking into the same place as the one that I am publishing data. So I can say to the consumer, let's bind the queue to the created to do's exchange with the queue name testing created. And I will need that queue name. So let me move it to a variable because once I send the message, once I post the request, what I will do is that I will go back to my RabbitMQ and say, please try to consume that queue for a maximum of five seconds. And let's wait for this. We can assign the result to a variable and then say that the result should be true. So now when we run our tests, if we go into Docker, we'll see containers starting and we can see here that is from test containers. Then we have seen that now they are stopping. And now that I have no container running, I can go back to my tests and I will see that it succeeded. So this way I have an efficient way to have tests in place on top of RabbitMQ and I can run my tests by the end, the instance will disappear. And this is an excellent way to fight flaky tests when we are testing dependencies like this one. And if you like this, I think that you will like as well another approach to use Docker for testing. And you can find all about it in this video right here, where I explain you how to use Docker Compose to start your infrastructure for testing.